neat wizard so in this video we we'll started from the bryophytes bryophytes include the various mosses and liverworts that are found commonly growing in moist shaded areas in the hills bryophytes are also called amphibians of the plant kingdom because these plants can live in soil but are dependent on water for sexual reproduction they usually occur in damp humid and shaded localities they play an important role in plant succession on bare rocks soil the plant body of bryophytes is more differentiated than that of algae it is thallus like and prostrate or erect and attached to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids they lack true roots stem or leaves they may possess root leaf like or stem like structures the main plant body of the bryophyte is haploid it produces gametes hence is called a gametophyte the sex organs in bryophytes are multicellular the male sex organ is called anthidium they produce by flagellate anthrazoids the female sex organ called archegonium is flask shaped in produces a single egg the anthrazoids are released into water where they come in contact with archegonium and anthrazoid fuses with the egg to produce the zygote zygotes do not undergo reduction division immediately they produce a multicellular body called a sporophyte the sporophyte is not free living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte and derives nourishment from it some cells of the sporophyte undergo reduction division to produce haploid spores these spores germinate to produce gametophyte Bryophytes in general are of little economic importance but some mosses provide food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals A species of asphagnum amos provide pit that have king been used as a fuel and as packing material for transshipment of living material because of their capacity to hold water mosses along with lichens are the first organism to colonize rocks and hence are of great ecological importance they decompose rocks making the substrate suitable for the growth of higher plants since mosses form dense mats on the soils they reduce impact of falling rain and prevent soil erosion the bryophytes are divided into liverworts and mosses now liverworts the liverworts grow usually in moist sandy habitats such as banks of streams marshy ground damp soil bulk of trees and deep in the woods the plant body of a liverwort is thalloid marchensia the thallus is dorsi ventral and closely apparised to the substrate the leafy members have thin leaf like appendages into rows on the stem like structures as sexual reproduction in liverworts takes place by fragmentation of thalli or by the formation of specialized structures called gamma gamma are green multicellular asexual birds which develop in small receptacles called gamma cups located on the thalli the gamma become detached from the parent body and germinate to form new individuals during sexual reproduction male and female sex organs are produced either on the same or on different thalli the sporophyte is differentiated into a foot seta and capsule after meiosis spores are produced within the capsule these spores germinate to form free living gametophytes now mosses the predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss is the gametophyte 
which consists of two stages. The first stage is the protonema stage, which develops directly from a spore. It is creeping green branched and frequently filamentous stage. The second stage is the leafy stage, which develops from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud. They consist of upright, slender, axis bearing, spirally arranged leaves. They are attached to the soil through multicellular and branched rhizoids. These stage bears the sex organs. Vegetative reproduction in mosses is by fragmentation and budding in the secondary protonema. In sexual reproduction, the sex organs Anthridia and Archegonia are produced at the apex of the leafy shoots after fertilization. The zygote develops into a sporophyte consisting of a food seta and capsule. The sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than then in liverworts. The capsule contains spores. Spores are formed after meiosis. The mosses have an elaborate mechanism of a spore dispersal. Common examples of mosses are Funaria, Polytrichum, and Sphagnum. Now, pteridophytes. The pteridophytes include horsetails and ferns. Pteridophytes are used for medicinal purpose and as soil blinders. They are also frequently grown as ornamentals evolutionarily. They are the first terrestrial plants to possess vascular tissues like xylem and phloem. The pteridophytes are found in cold, damp, shady places to some many flourish well in sandy soil conditions. You may recall that in bryophytes, the dominant phase in the life cycle is the gametophytic plant body. However, in pteridophytes, the main plant body is a sporophyte, which is differentiated into true root stems and leaves. These organs possess well differentiated vascular tissues. The leaves in pteridophyte are small as a microphyllus, as in Selaginella, or large called microf macrophylls, as in ferns. The saprophyte bear sporangia that are substantiated by leaf like appendages called sporophylls. In some cases, sporophylls may form distinct compact structures called strobili or cones as in Selaginella and Equisectum. The sporangia produce spore by meiosis in spore mother cells. The spores germinate to give rise to inconspicuous small but multicellular free living mostly photosynthetic thalloid gametophyte called prothallus. These gametophytes require cool, damp, shady places to grow because of these specific restricted requirement and the need for water for fertilization. The speed of living pteridophytes is limited and restricted to narrow geographical reasons. The gametophytes bear male and female sex organs called anthridia and archegonia respectively. Water is required for transfer of anthrozoites. The male gamete released from the anthridia in the mouth of archegonium. Fusion of male gamete with the egg present in the archegonium result in the formation of zygote. Zygote thereafter produces a multicellular well differentiated sporophyte which is the dominant phase of the pteridophytes. In majority of the pteridophytes or spores are of similar kind. Such plants are called homosporous genera like Selaginella and Salvinia which produce two kinds of spore macro and micro spores are known as heterospores. The mega spores and micro spores germinate and give rise to female and male gametophytes respectively. The female gametophytes in these plants are retained on the parent sporophytes for variable periods. The development of the zygotes into young embryos takes place within the female gametophytes. This event is a precursor to the seed habit considered an important step in evolution. 
the pteridophytes are further classified into four classes Cellopsida for example included Silotum and the Lycopsida Selaginella and the Lycopodium and the third class is Sphenopsida which included Equisectum and the fourth class is Staropsida which included Dryopteris Taris and Adiantum now Gymnosperms the Gymnosperms are plants in which the ovules are not enclosed by any ovary wall and remain exposed both before and after fertilization. The seeds that develop post fertilization are not covered or need. Gymnosperms include medium sized trees or tall trees and shrubs. One of the gymnosperms, the giant redwood tree Shikoya, is one of the tallest tree species. The roots are generally tap roots. Roots in some genera have fungal association in the form of mycorrhiza pinus. While in some other cycles, small specialized roots called corallite roots are association with nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria. The stems are unbranched, for example, cycas, or branched, for example, pinus and cedrus. The leaves may be simple or compound. In cycas, the pinnate leaves persist for a few years. The leaves in gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand extremes of temperature, humidity, and wind. In conifers, the needle like leaves reduce the surface area. Their thick cuticle and sunken stomata also help to reduce water loss. The gymnosperms are hetero. Spores. They produce haploid, microspores, and mega spores. The two kinds of spores are produced within sporangia that are born on sporophylls, which are arranged spirally along an axis to form wax or compact strobili or cones. The strobili bearing microsporophylls and microsporangia are called microsporangiate or male strobili. The microspores develop into amalgamatophytic generation, which is highly reduced and is confined to only a limited number of cells. These reduced gametophyte is called a pollen grain. The development of pollen grains take place within the microsporangia the cones bearing megasporophylls with ovules or megasporangia are called microsporangiate or female strobili the male or female cones or strobili may be born on the same tree as in pinus however in cycas male cones and megasporophylls are born in different trees the megaspore mother cell is differentiated from one of the cells of the new cellus. The new cellus is protected by envelopes and the composite structures is called an ovule. The ovules are born on mega sporophylls which may be clustered to form the female cones. The mega spore mother cell divides meiotically to form four mega spores. Unlike bryophytes and pteridophytes, in gymnosperms the male and the female gametophytes do not have an independent free living existence. They remain within the sporangia retained on the sporophytes. The pollen grain is released from the microsporangium. They are carried in air currents and come in contact with the opening of the ovules born on mega sporophylls. The pollen tube carrying the male gametes grows towards archegonia in the ovules and discharge their contents near the mouth of the archegonia. Following fertilization, zygote develops into an embryo and the ovules into seeds. These seeds are not covered. Now angiosperms. Unlike the gymnosperms where the ovules are naked in the angiosperms or flowering plants. The pollen grains and ovules are developed in specialized structures called flowers. 
in angiosperms the seeds are enclosed in fruits the angiosperms are an exceptionally large group of plants occurring in wide range of habitats the range in size from the smallest wallflower to tall trees of eucalyptus over 100 meters they provide important products they are divided into two classes the dicotyledonous and the monocotyledons the dicotyledons are characterized by seeds having two cotyledons radicate vanishing in leaves and tetramerous or pentamerous flowers having four or five members in each flower whorls the monocotyledons on the other hand are characterized by single cotyledonous seeds parallel vanishing in leaves and trimerous flowers having three members in each floral whorls the male sex organ in a flower is the stamen each stamen consists of a slender filament with an anther at the tip within the anthers the pollen mother cell divided by meiosis to produce microspores which matures into pollen grains the female sex organs in a flower is the pistil pistil consists of a swollen ovary at its base a long slender style and a stigma inside the ovary ovules are present generally each ovule has a megaspore mother cell that undergoes meiosis to form four haploid megaspores three of them degenerate and one divided to form the embryo sac each embryo sac has a three celled egg apparatus one egg cell and two synergids three antipodal cells and two polar nuclei the polar nuclei eventually fuse to produce a diploid secondary nucleus pollen grain after dispersal from the anthers are carried by wind or various other agencies to stigma of a pistil this is termed as pollination the pollen grains germinate on the stigma and the resulting pollen tubes grow through the tissues of a stigma and a style and reach the ovule the pollen tubes enter the embryo sac where two amalgamates are discharged one of the amalgamates fuses with the egg cell called syngamy to form a zygote the pollen grains germinate on the stigma and the resulting pollen grain tubes the pollen tube grains germinate on the stigma and resulting pollen tubes grow through the tissues of a stigma and a style and reach the ovule the pollen tubes enter the embryo sac where two amalgamates are discharged one of the amalgamates fuses with the egg cell called syngamy to form a zygote the other amalgamates fuses with the diploid secondary nucleus to produce a triploid primary endosperm nucleus because of the occurrence of two fusions syngamy and triple fusion these event is termed as double fertilization an event unique to angiosperms the zygote develops into an embryo with one or two cotyledons and the pan develops into endosperms which provides nourishment to the developing embryo the synergids and the antipodals degenerates after fertilization during these events the ovules develop into seeds and the ovaries develop into fruits the life cycle of the angiosperms now plant life cycles and the alternation of generation bryophytes and the pteridophytes exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle zemnosperms angiosperms and the algae fucus exhibit diplontic life cycle algae volvox chlamydomonas and spirogyra shows haplontic life cycle the diploid sporophyte is represented by a dominant independent photosynthetic vascular plant body interestingly while most algal genera are haplontic some of them such as ectocarpus polysiphonia kelps are haplodiplontic fucus and alga is diplontic thank you